So going back to that earth example, let's say some charge comes in like this, and then the B is like that. Forty degrees. So let's say it's the proton again. So now calculate the radius. And we don't have to redo everything, but uh, if it's coming in at forty degrees from the vertical. So top view, let me just write it here, will look like what here? Um, no, you know what? I shouldn't do a top view. I should just do uh, just a side view here. In other words, the B field is going like this. From the top view, you can't really see the angle, right? Uh, the B field is going, so the side view will just be the same view as we're looking at right now. The B is going up right there at the equator. The, the velocity is going like this. And what's the angle between the V and the B? Now in this case, it looks like the angle is 40, right? But the angle is not the 40. What matters is the angle between the V and the B not between the V and uh, some other axis. So what's given to you is the axis here is 40. So uh, if I put the V and the B together, this is going to be six, uh, 50, right? Let me draw this bigger again. In other words, what was given to you was the vertical axis of the Earth. The, the V is 40 degrees from the vertical axis, okay? But what matters is the, the V along the B. The angle between the V and the B is 50. So then what's the radius of the proton going to be? So 70 meters times sine of uh, 50 degrees. So it's going to be reduced by uh, that many degrees. And the sine of the electron is going to be 0 0.0377 times sine of 50. And then what's going to happen is their orbit, uh, what was their orbit? They, their orbit, now if it was a perpendicular, their orbit was what? It was just a simple circle, right? Just going in circle. Uh, how is the orbit of this going to look? It's going to go, it's gonna, they're just going to go like that. Right? And it's going to go like this, something like that. Now, as the overall strength of the B field increases here, the radius should be getting smaller. And if the radius is small enough over there, then it can escape out of the V field, okay? Um, I can even ask an interesting question. Oh, by the way, how is the electron's path going to be? If the uh, path is negative Q, is it now going to go down? Downward, because a lot of people think, oh, okay, negative Q, you switch the direction, right? So therefore, the negative Q goes in the other direction. The answer is no. <laughs> OK, this is a little tricky thing. Uh, the, remember, only the perpendicular component of the V is affected by the magnetic field. The parallel component is not affected at all, whether it's an electron or a proton. So if it's a negative Q, it's still going to go like that and go the same direction. But it's just going to loop opposite way. 
So the negative Q is going to come and maybe loop this way. Because their parallel component is both up. So whether it's an electron that is coming at an angle like this, and it still goes up, whether it's a proton, it still goes up. But what matters is uh, that their parallel component is like this. Now I could ask an interesting question. How long is it going to take them to reach the North Pole and escape? Let's say they're going to escape. That's the north geometric pole, which is equivalent to the, uh, which, is sim uh, which is close to the south magnetic pole, okay? I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next chapter when we do chapter 30, how B fields are created. I'll talk about the shape of a B field and what, what north pole is, what south pole is, and stuff like that. So how long will it reach to reach north pole? So how do we find that? Well, the velocity that's not going to be affected is V parallel, right? V cosine theta. So what is that equal to? 2 times 10 to the fifth times cosine of the 50, right? Not cosine of 40. It's cosine of 50 because it's this one right here v parallel, and that's just going to go along the b field. OK? So what is that? OK, and then it's got to go a distance of what? Let's just say it's roughly the same as the, it's going to be a quarter the circumference of the Earth, right? Quarter, this is a quarter, so the whole circumference is uh, whatever that is. So it's going to go a distance of the quarter, the circumference of the Earth, roughly. So the distance is equal to V parallel times T. The distance is quarter, the circumference of the Earth. Which is what? Uh, 2 pi r over, uh, 2 pi r over uh, uh, 4. So circumference is 2 pi r. So 2 pi r over 4 is going to give you pi r over 2. So the t is going to equal pi r. What's the radius of the earth? Check it. 70. No? Six point thirty seven times ten to the sixth, yeah. Because I, I know that it's six thousand three hundred seventy something kilometers. So uh, changing that to meters is uh, like that. Okay, so the time is going to be this is gonna cancel that and you're gonna be left with one ten. So ten times so sixty three point seven times pi divided by two times one point two nine. That's not much time, huh? Within a minute, a little more than a minute, once that proton electron hits the surface of the Earth, it reaches the North Pole, and then if it escapes, then we see an aurora, okay? But of course, aurora is only seen when multiple number of these at the same time happens, you know? Um, now, of course, they're not really gonna hit the Earth's surface. It's uh, at, at a certain elevation, right? So it's gonna be a longer distance. Okay, so that would be a good test question. I'll give you the proton speed coming in. I'll give you the angle. I'll give you the elevation. I'll give you the radius of the Earth. From there, you can calculate the circumference that it's going to do, right? And then you tell me how many seconds it takes to make it. What's the radius of its orbit?